Hey guys, it's Caitlin. Welcome back to Her Atlas, your one-way ticket to Japan. Today I am taking you to the magical city of Beppu, a hot spring city in Oite Prefecture on the island of Kyushu. Beppu is one of Japan's hidden gems and the perfect place to visit for a relaxing weekend away. Not many people are familiar with this area of Japan and I have to say, they are really missing out on unique cultural experiences. In today's video, I'll take you along as we experience a private onsen, get buried on Beppu Beach, eat local hell steam cuisine, and much more. We live in Iwakuni, Japan, so we decided the best way to get to Beppu was driving using the toll roads. It was only 3 hours and 15 minutes and cost us about 67 US dollars each way. Beppu is also accessible by public transportation, with the main station being Beppu Station. We reserved an Airbnb for the weekend, but like most places, couldn't check in until 4pm. To maximize our daytime here, we drove to Beppu really early and booked an appointment at ANA Intercontinental Beppu for lunch followed by a private onsen. That way we could buy time until we could check into our Airbnb. This is a 5 star luxury resort brand new to Beppu but you do not have to stay here to book services or enjoy their facilities. Our reservations for lunch were at 1pm and our onsen for 2pm but we got to the hotel really early, like 45 minutes early. I expressed an interest in the beautiful property and they offered us a tour even though we weren't staying here. It was very cool of them to do and I was really excited and curious to see what the rooms here looked like. They work with local artists and use local resources like bamboo and volcanic rock to bring the outside inside. You can truly feel the culture of Beppu in the walls. The details were precious and thoughtful in true Japanese fashion and the staff is extremely passionate about their facilities and their city. You can just tell by their mannerisms and how happy they are when they talk about it. If you get the chance to visit ANA Intercontinental Beppu, I highly recommend asking for a tour. We are about to have our very first onsen hot spring experience in Japan, so. I'm really excited and I cannot wait to show you guys what this looks like. We just finished up in the private onsen at ANA Intercontinental Beppu, and it was absolutely amazing. It was so much better than I thought it would be. It was really hot, and now I feel very relaxed and tired, and like maybe I need a nap. Um, how are you feeling? Uh, fantastic. Like it was magical. So 10 out of 10, highly recommend. And we're here during the winter time, and I think that the contrast between like the super hot water and the really cool air was like just very relaxing and soothing, so I would absolutely recommend it. We're at the Hells of Beppu. Welcome to the Hells of Beppu. Or in Japanese, you may see signs around the neighborhoods saying Jigoku Beppu. Jigoku means hell in Japanese. The Beppu Hells are presented to visitors in a touristy fashion with cute devil characters to go with them. There are seven hells of Beppu in a consolidated area for our viewing pleasure. These are not meant to be bathed in, but rather experienced. Think of it more like a walking tour through a neighborhood as you casually pop in to view these natural phenomenons. Some of the hells 
have interactive installations like this. These are fun just to try to see how hot the natural steam is on its own. Go get your face in it. <laughs> that was weak, man. I couldn't do it. The local cuisine in Beppu is called Hell Steam Cuisine, where they harness the steam and use it to cook their food. I'll actually take you to a full-on restaurant later, so hang tight. But I wanted to show you what one of the eating areas looked like and our first experience with food from the Hells. We ordered these hard-boiled eggs not knowing the color was brown inside, and honestly, I don't know how to explain it either, but to be expected, they tasted just like sulfur. I also wanted to show you that we were eating right across from foot baths. I don't know if this is normal here, we just kind of rolled with it, but I thought it was interesting to share. By now, it's about 5 p.m. It's still our first day in Beppu, and we've already done a lot. Let's move on to our Japanese Airbnb. The shower, bath, and sink are usually in a small room together. I am 5'3 for reference. Depending on the town you are in, you will have a common room that includes the entrance, kitchen, and living area. It's rare to have anything bigger than this in a city. You have all the basic necessities that you need. This is a very average and normal Airbnb to expect in Japan. In Beppu, we stayed near Beppu Station, which is a lively area with restaurants and bars. I'll link that below for you. A typical bedroom that sleeps for looks like this. Just keep in mind, Japanese beds are not large. These are in between a twin and a queen. My husband and I usually push the beds together, but sleep on each one alone. This Airbnb actually had a really nice balcony with a washer outside. It also had a really beautiful view of the mountains. And if you see this remote, it is to control the air conditioner or heater. So look for a key left by your host. Welcome to day two, where our priorities are getting bread. This bakery is actually located at Beppu Station. It's really hard to miss. Anyway, we are on our way to Beppu Beach Sand Bath to get buried in the sand. Today is day two for us in Beppu, and the first thing we're going to do is try to make a reservation at Beppu Beach, Beppu Beach Sand Bath where they basically will bury us in sand and hot onsen water fills it up, heats it up, and you kind of just like lay there and relax in the sand. So we're gonna go try to check it out and we'll take you guys along with us. I'm excited. So oh, it's really hard to find, like this car just got lost. We actually had to drive all the way down the street, but this is the pool-in area. This is the front of the building. The sand baths are going to be back there, and then they also have parking. It's kind of hard to see, but this is the sign you want to look for on the side of the road. Oh, no video, so I guess we won't be doing this. We just went inside and got our tickets, and they gave us an appointment time, so we're going to be sitting in our car for like an hour, just killing time. And we think we accidentally bought towels instead of renting them. But I'm kind of bummed because we can't videotape or take any pictures, which I also understand privacy. This is kind of supposed to be a relaxing onsen. However, it does look really cool. So when it's over, I'll just try to explain everything that happened the best way I can. So yeah, kind of bummed we can't take pictures or videos, but I also understand and respect that. We just finished at the sand baths and it was a great experience. It was actually really, really hot on my butt. I thought that it was on fire, so I had to keep moving under there. It felt like a weighted blanket that was warm, right? And I don't know, how would you describe it? Yeah, it was very relaxing. It was very relaxing. I didn't relaxing. have the same hot butt experience. It was pleasantly 
It was very pleasant, but of course you can get up anytime you want. You're only in there for 15 minutes. We didn't take a camera or anything, and then they asked us if we had cameras on us, so I guess my advice is if you want a picture to take that. But as far as the facility, it is a very traditional Japanese bathhouse. So you are getting naked in front of other people. You're bathing in front of other people. Um, just so you know that ahead of time. I've done this before, so it's still not normal for me, but it's not as weird. And if you get confused because the English here isn't as easy to understand as other places, just kind of do what everybody else is doing. Somebody will help you. Like I didn't really know where to put um, my robe. They give you a yukata. Is that right? Yukata? I'm helping you learn how to say it right. Yukata. They give you a yukata, which acts, it's like a robe, bathrobe, and it acts as a barrier between your body and the sand. Um, so you don't wear anything under that. Um, I just followed everybody into the changing room and just kind of did what everybody else did. They have lockers. Afterwards, you you go into um, like a shower room and you shower off and you put your yukata in a little bin and then you go into the bathroom, like literally a bath and a shower room and you bathe in front of everybody else. You are naked, that's very traditional. And then you go and change and you're on your way. So I would say it was a fantastic experience. I would do it again if I came with friends who wanted to do it. And I, I think it's a great experience to try. And I think it was what, 2,800 yen. And we also got towels, which you do need towels. Um, otherwise you can use your own clothes to dry off. So yeah. Now to my favorite topic, which is food. Specifically, Jigoku Mushi, which is translated to English as Hell Steamed Cuisine, the local delicacy. If you watch James May on Amazon Prime, then you will definitely recognize this exact restaurant. I have it linked below in my guide to Beppu in case you're planning to visit. You order your food via vending machine. It is totally a self-service restaurant. You get to cook it yourself. They give you your food uncooked and help you layer it in order of how long it needs to cook. The steam is harnessed from the natural springs and is said to bring out the best flavors of the food. You can find restaurants like this all over Beppu, but we had a great experience here. Once the timer goes off, you collect your food and enjoy. Personally, it wasn't our favorite meal, but you know, when in Rome. The final excursion for our virtual tour of Bebu is the Bebu Ropeway. The Bebu Ropeway is an aerial tram that goes all the way up Mount Tsurumi. I'm sure I butchered that word, so please don't come after me. My Japanese is still a work in progress. Anyway, there is public transportation here. You can take the bus, but we decided to drive and it was about a 20 to 25 minute drive from central Bebu. It was also about 38 US dollars for the both of us to have round trip tickets. And honestly, it was a pretty amazing experience. You get aerial views of the mountain and of the city below. The trip actually only took about 10 to 15 minutes to get to the top and the views from above were absolutely breathtaking. There was also snow on top and it was about zero degrees Celsius or 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was pretty freezing. And we didn't actually stay as long as we probably normally would have just because of the temperatures. So just keep that in mind. You can hike all the way to the top, which is what we did. And the views again were absolutely breathtaking. I'm not sure, but I believe you can see the volcano from here, which is in front of me, but it was really hard to tell. Thank you guys for joining me on our virtual trip to Beppu. I hope you learned a few things and fell in love with the new city. Listed below, I will have a few links for you, including an actual travel guide to Beppu. So if you need help further planning your trip, go ahead and check that out. I have a lot more resources there for you. Until next time.